the next video, the next installment for the world's greatest ghosts, and we're up to John Wesley's nightmare. The servant who answered a knock on the door of a Lincolnshire parsonage was mildly annoyed to find no one there when he opened it. He blamed playful youngsters, but when only hours later he watched a corn grinding hand mill turning without human help, he realised that something beyond his understanding was happening. The event of that December day in 1716 heralded a two-month nightmare for the devout household at Epworth. Their ordeal was chronic chronicled by one of the family's children, John Wesley, who was to become founder of the Methodist Church. His sister Molly was the next person to notice something strange. As she sat reading in the library, the door opened on its own, and she heard footsteps walking round her chair, accompanied by the rustling of petticoats. One by one, the rest of the family told of their own eerie experiences, rappings on a table, mysterious footsteps on the stairs, bangs in the hall and kitchen, the sound of an invisible cradle rocking in the nursery. At 9.45 each evening, a man's steps were heard plodding down from the northeast corner of the house. The Wesleys christened him Old Geoffrey. John's father Samuel became convinced that the spirit was an agent of evil, testing the faith of the family. Finally, he challenged it to leave the children alone and meet him alone in the study for a showdown. It was to be a spectacular confrontation. When Mr. Wesley tried to enter the room, a powerful force pushed the door back in his face. He struggled through and began asking the phantom to identify itself. His questions were answered only by furious knocking from each wall in turn, building to a terrifying, terrifying crescendo. But the parson's faith and nerves were unshakable. Gradually, the spirit's apparent anger subsided, the sounds faded, and the house was left in peace. The Epworth haunting is one of the best documented cases of poltergeists, ghosts that are heard but not seen. They are more common than spirits that materialize and in many ways even more frightening. The word poltergeist is derived from German where the earliest cases were reported. In 355 AD, people in the village of Bingen am Rhein were hauled from their beds by unseen hands and subjected to an onslaught of stones and strange noises. Five centuries later, the same thing happened at nearby Camden, when a disembodied voice accused the local priest and some of the villagers of misdeeds. In 1721, the Groben home of German Oriental scholar Pro Professor Schupart was invaded by an invisible terror which threw furniture about. His wife was bitten, pinched, and knocked down, and the professor was violently assaulted by an invisible attacker. Incredulous neighbours witnessed the incident. Since then, poltergeists have been reported all over the world. In 1762, eminent men of letters such as Dr. Samuel Johnson, Horace Walpole, and Oliver Goldsmith were among those who investigated strange wrappings and scratching at a house in London's Cock Lane. And at, Cinder, at Cider Stone Rectory in Norfolk, Curious groans, slamming doors, running footsteps in corridors, and knocking that shook the whole house were reported by several families in the 40-year period that ended in 1833. In 1890, Cesar Lombrazo, a leading Italian psychiatrist, was called in by the owners of a small inn at Turin. He watched bottles of wine smash and shoes fly through the air. In 1937, stones and other missiles rained down for almost a week on a family in Port Louis, Mauritius even when all doors and windows were bolted shut. One of the most terrifying poltergeists on record struck in 1878 at Amherst, Nova Scotia. Terrible crashes under the bed of 19-year-old Ever Scott were followed by lighted matches tumbling from the ceiling. Mystery fires fled up in the cellar of her home and a dress went up in flames. A, doc a doctor treating the girl for shock was pelted with plaster and planks of wood and saw a bedclothes being ripped off her bed. The family fled after a wall was daubed with the message, As a cock, you are my cocks, you are mine to kill. Today, the invisible spirits are still getting up to mischief, often in the most unlikely places. In 1963, the day after motorcycle dealer Sid Milani knocked down a wall in his workshops at Lytton Buzzard, Bedfordshire, he found three of his bikes damaged. He then watched spanners fly off their hooks and a tarpaulin rise from his scooter and shoot across the room. Petrol tanks were mysteriously moved and neighbours complained of weird nocturnal noises from the building. 
A West German lawyer's office in Rosenheim, Bavaria was suddenly plunged into chaos in November 1967. Light bulbs started smashing for no reason and lampshades tumbled to the ground. One day all four phones on the man's desk rang simultaneously but there were no callers when he lifted the receivers. Experts who checked his premises reported sudden strange surges in the electricity current. An American family found a quilt in a box when they moved into their new home in Poi City, Wisconsin, in 1972 and decided to use it on their spare bed. But guests on slept soundly under it. They told their hostess, Mrs. Dora Munro, that someone kept tugging it off the bed during the night. Mrs. Munro's daughter, Florence, said she was awakened at midnight. And during a battle to keep the quilt covering her, she heard a voice say, Give me back my Christmas present. The Foundation for Research into the Nature of Man set up at Duke University, California, uh, Carolina, sorry, in 1964, noted that poltergeist activity often stops when a teenager leaves a home or office. Some er experts believe that the manifestations may be caused by psychokinesis, an energy released during puberty which gives young minds power over matter. And that ends that installment for the world's greatest ghosts.